Hello, it's Brent Shire Lover Jelena, and today is Monday, which means it's Macro Monday, and I can't think of a better way to start out your week than being more efficient and effective on your computer. And the best way to do that is use our latest macro. What kind of macro are we posting this morning? Let me show you. All right, this is the macro we're dropping this morning. This is the Excel safe copy of workbook macro. This is an Excel macro that's gonna save a copy of the active workbook that you're working in, and it's gonna save it by default to the same folder path of that active workbook. Now the concept of this seems simple. All you're doing is saving an active workbook, so you don't have to navigate to file, save as, find the folder path, save the file type, and do all of those things. That is eliminated with this macro, but even better, what happens is there's the creation of two folders. There's a folder created for this current year if there is not one created, and there also is a folder created for the current month if one does not exist, which is awesome because that standardizes your storage process and helps you be more consistent each and every time. You no longer have to create folders and complete that tedious task. If you want to take this macro to the next level, I'm going to show you in this video how you can leverage the Excel calendar reminder macros to automatically open that workbook you want to copy or automatically fire this macro on a reoccurring basis. If you've yet to see this macro in action, here is the see it in action video here. You can take a moment and watch that video. There is also the most important part of this video, which is the code. Before we jump into the code, I want to show you this section over here. First time using VBA. If you've yet to set up these three steps, activate the developer tab, update your macro security, and set up references for leverage and lean macros, you need to do this. And the good news is this doesn't take much time at all. Let me show you. If I just navigate into Excel, I can navigate up to customize quick access toolbar, and then select more commands. And then for more commands, I'm going to select Customize Ribbon. If you navigate over to the right, you'll see in the main tab section, if you scroll down, you'll see the Developer tab is unchecked. Go ahead and checkmark that, make it happy, and click OK. All right, and then you'll see the Developer tab is now available. You can select the Developer tab, and then within the Developer tab, look for Macro Security. Within Macro Security, you're going to see that all macros are disabled without notification. Go ahead and select Enable All Macros. Even though this is not recommended because potentially dangerous code could run, I'm going to show you each line of code you're running with this macro. So there's no harm because you're going to see exactly what it does and you're going to confirm that it does exactly what it is doing in this video. You should never blindly run code if you don't know what it's going to do to your applications. All right, with that done, we can go ahead and open Visual Basic. And then in Visual Basic, go ahead and navigate over to Tools and then select References. This step is really straightforward because the two default selections in Excel are the only references you need for this macro. You can go ahead and click OK. All right, well, let's work on getting the code into Visual Basic. Back on the web page, you can just double click to copy the code in between the code numbers and the physical code itself to select all of the code. And then with Control C, we can navigate back over into Visual Basic. And then what you're going to need to do is create a module to paste the code in. You can use this black drop down arrow and select module and you'll see you have module one. Ensure module one is selected and you can go ahead and paste in the code for the safe copy of workbook macro. So the next thing I wanna do is walk through each line of code for this macro. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap Visual Basic over here and instead of grabbing the Excel workbook, I'm actually gonna grab the folder where this workbook is saved because essentially all this macro is doing is saving the active workbook, which can be a little boring, but it's the folder creation that I really wanna show you that takes this macro to the next level. So I'll go ahead and walk through each line of code with F8. All right, so we're just gonna bypass the error handler here. We're not gonna display any alerts so you don't see if you're overwriting an existing copy. This is something you may wanna to change to true if you do or just remove this code line. We're going to identify the file path as the active path of the workbook. And this is where we're going to create the first folder, which is going to be the current year. Obviously, this is only going to get created once a year. But if you've moved into a new year, you're going to get a new folder for the current year. So you can see that being created 
in the folder path of the active workbook. The next thing we're going to look for is a current month within that current year. If one doesn't exist, it will be created. I'll show you that once this is done running. And now we're saving the active workbook into that month folder and we're saving it as today's date. So once this is done running, you get a nice pop-up box saying that the active workbook has been saved as the current date and to the following location within that new current year folder and current month folder. You can go ahead and click OK. And then this macro is done. So let me show you the folders that were created. There is now a folder for this year, a folder for this month, and then our new copy of this workbook saved as today's date. So you can imagine as you continue to use this macro, the folders are going to be created automatically and continue to grow and standardize that entire storage process. All right, another thing I like to do is create a custom button for my macros. You can actually do this really easily by navigating back over to Customize Quick Access Toolbar. In More Commands, you can navigate back to Customize Ribbon. And what you're going to need to do is create a new custom tab group or something along those lines. What I like to do is create a new tab and then actually I'm going to name that tab macros. And then under that tab is a custom group. I like to leave that custom group name blank. You can name your group whatever you feel like. And then with that custom group selected, you're going to drop down popular commands and go to macros. And then you can pull over the save copy of workbook macro into that custom group. Now you can clean up the name. I like to put spaces in between here because it just kind of makes it all one word. And then you can select an icon you want to use to fire this macro. I like to use the save button icon. You can pick any icon that you want and then go ahead and click OK. So you'll see what's changed here is I now have a macros custom tab and a custom group with the custom button save copy of workbook. Now I mentioned before earlier in this video if you want to take this macro to the next level you can actually leverage the Excel calendar reminder macros to either open this workbook automatically or even call this macro reoccurring on your Outlook calendar. So let me take some time to show you that. All right, with Outlook open, you're going to go to your calendar and then on your calendar, you're going to create an appointment. So the first action I want to show you with the Excel calendar reminder macros is the open action. In the subject field, you're just going to type the word open and then following open can just be a note of what you have opening and the location field needs to be the entire path of the workbook that you want to open. You can go ahead and just copy that all the way over here and then you have to put in the actual file name with the file type extension. An easy way to do that is just go to rename and select all of that and you can then paste that in. Now another thing you have to do for this open action is to set the category to Excel. The color of this category does not matter. It's just the text saying Excel. So you now have that selected. It's scheduled for 9 a.m., but for the sake of this video, we're going to push this back using the reminder field. I'm going to push this back six hours. Now the reminder field is when this macro is going to fire. Once you get that reminder pop up, this will run and open that workbook found at that path under that name and file extension. I can show you this just by clicking save. You can see once that calendar fires, the workbook is going to open. Now the cool thing about this open action is you can schedule this to happen reoccurring and at a specific time based on the time you schedule the appointment and based on the time you trigger your reminder to fire. Now the open action is great, but I want to show you the call action which takes that open action to the next level by opening this Excel workbook and then calling the macro within it. So instead of using the phrase open in the subject field, we're going to change this to call. And what is following call is the title of the macro. And if you recall, it is save copy of workbook. So we can leave the location field alone because it's pointing to the folder path and the Excel workbook that we want to open and call this macro. And the category is already set to Excel. The only thing we need to change is we need to change the reminder field and push this out for the sake of this video. And I can show you this call action just by clicking save. And you can see in just a moment that Excel workbook has opened, it's looked inside it and found the macro to call automatically. So this is also another way to take this to the next level and schedule this on your Outlook calendar to fire reoccurring. Now, as I mentioned before, we're hiding the display alerts. Display alerts, as an example, could be 
overwriting an existing copy if you try to run this macro twice in the same day. If you'd rather see that pop up to confirm, do you want to overwrite an existing copy, go ahead and remove this code line or just change that to true instead of false. You can also look at where you can change the name of the new copied workbook in code line number 24 here. You can see it's being saved as the current date, but as an example, you can also add some text just before that current date. Let's say you're running company payroll and you'd rather say company payroll followed by the current date. You can do that as well. And then also message boxes. I've mentioned before, a little secret, I never display message boxes when I run macros, but I'm very familiar with VBA and it's just one less click I have to avoid. If you're just getting introduced to it, you really want to see some things once the macro is finished. This is why I put them in there by default. If you want to remove them, save yourself a click, you can do that as well. Well, all right, that's all I have for this new macro, save copy of workbook. I absolutely want to know what you think of this macro. Thanks so much for watching. Stay awesome. Thank you so much for taking time to view this video. I really do appreciate it. If you want to start using the macro you've seen in the video today, I have a link in the description. If you could do me another big favor, please subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay updated on any new videos that I'm posting. Like us, follow us on all of our other social media channels, and as always, stay awesome.